Now we can have a look on the EMF equation of the synchronous machine. <coughs> P, the EMF induced is equals to 4.44 KC into KD into F5 and what is what? We will discuss that. 4.44 is the concept. KC Kc is called as the pitch factor. Kd is known as the distribution factor. F is the frequency Phi is the flux and N is the speed in RPM So it is 4.44 AC KD Phi F N What is KC? The pitch factor KP or KC in some books it is KP, in some books it is KC. So I can have the KP also, I can write it as a KP also, pitch factor. It is defined as the ratio of voltage induced in the fraction pitch winding to that of the full pitch winding. So mathematically it is equal to. cos beta by 2 and where this beta is exactly equals to the angle by which the coil span shock fall short. <coughs> As we have discussed the uh, pitch of the coil, as we have discussed the uh, uh, pitch factor and uh, distribution factor, uh, all that in DC machine only, and so there is no need to discuss is that right now. So we can understand this thing by angle which by which the coil span fall short is called the pitch factor, and mathematically it is equals to Kp is equals to cos beta by two. Distribution factor is given by KD is equal to sin m beta by 2 divided by m sin beta by 2. Beta is nothing but which we have discussed over here. Or here I can have the expression about the beta also that is 180 degree divided by number of slots per pole. And and number of song slots per pole. Here, uh, if it is not visible, you see, it is 180 divided by number of slots per pole in the machine. Whereas M is equals to slots per pole per phase.
So sometimes in objective type of question, um, only KP and KD are um, normally asked about the, the machine will machine uh, some mathematical expression will be given or mathematical data will be given to you in the question and uh, we have to find the KP and KD. Please remember the formula for KP and KD, these are very important. And if we know this formula, we can find the E per phase of the machine. <coughs> so again, this, this is pitch factor KP is cos beta by 2 and KD is the distribution factor which is equals to sin beta by m sin beta by 2. And this here beta is equals to angle by which the coil span fall short, which is actually equals to volatility divided by slot per pole. And M is equals to slot per pole per phase. <coughs> so coming to another discussion. Coming to another discussion of what happens why we uh, uh, what happens when the machine is loaded loading of the machine uh, in the induction machine or in any of the machine we have seen that when there is a loading that there is a fallback of the the rotor to draw more power from the electrical uh, sorry from the mechanical domain in the same way a synchronous machine also behave but in a somewhat different manner we'll see that again if i say that this is the mmm which is rotating at the synchronous speed this is the mm of the stator This is the stator MMR which is moving at this speed. During the no load condition, my rotor MMR R would also be moving in the same direction with the speed of NS such that this blue red one red pen and this black pen are like this and red pen was, is moving like this so the black one was moving also like this in the same direction as that of the my flux of the rotating flux rotating magnetic field of the stator and the rotor will also is locked in that and the rotor is also moving with the same way now what happens if the machine is loaded what of this my rotor will fall back my stator is now moving with the speed of ns and my motor oops, rotor is has fallen back here and this rotor mf is but still running at the same speed ns in the same direction such that the magnetic locking of that rotor is still there but with a lag. Now this is the uh, MMF which is stator MMF and this is the rotor MMF. It was previously like this if they were moving uh, simultaneously. Now there is a lag between them and they are moving still moving with the, the same load angle in such a way that their angle is constant in this way. Now again the motor is still again loaded then it will the load angle will come over here but the rotor will continue to rotate in the synchronous speed only but the, there will be an angle which is called as delta that is called the load angle of the machine and this load angle at, will be continuously moving continuously higher for the higher loads so the load angle is what which is actually coming due to the load and uh, with higher load the load angle will be higher and the load angle will be this will continue up to the 90 degree 
So at 90 degrees, after 90 degrees, that the machine will lose its synchronism and may get stop. But if the damper bindings are present, then at that point, the machine will continue to run as induction machine and at that time, uh, it will uh, try to catch the um, uh, synchronous speed NS of the stator and uh, it will uh, create extra torque to come back into synchronism and once it is above 90 degree then again it will the machine will be get get pulled in synchronism and that will be again running as a synchronous motor so when the damper bindings are uh, uh, available when the damper bindings are present in the machine at that time the machine never stops it's continue to run in induction as an induction machine and after the load angle comes below 90 degree then again it is pulled back into synchronism and it continues to run as the synchronous machine. <coughs> we can have uh, the, this thing which we have seen in a graphical way or in a, uh, a phasor diagram way such that <coughs> we have seen that in this case, in the previous case when my rotor arc was here, uh, we have seen that also that this was E and EB were equal at that point. Now the, the due to load the current has increased and my rotor has come at this point R but still running as speed of NS. There is a lag in between and the angle which is delta is called as the load angle. So, what is this actually? My E is running like this. E is still there, but EB is now lesser. Here. So, E minus EB would come approximately uh, here. E minus E V will be almost here, and from this 90 degree would be lagging my current. So this is 90 degree. So this would be the case when my E V is lagging. Now, when my E V is positive, I can say now when this is my E and E V is now more. So, my E minus EB would be somewhat in this direction. This is my E, this is my EB. So, E minus EB would be somewhat in this direction. From this, the 90 degree would be somewhat here. And this was the current I. So, we can see, say that when the, the rotor fall back, the I current is, there is a current I and when the EB, which is the back in the, is more than the generated uh, EG, E, then at that point, the motor starts running as at the leading power factor here, then the current has gone beyond I, uh, beyond E. And the angle between E and I would be known as cos phi, and the angle between E and EB would be known as delta. This would be delta, and this will be your theta. So, we have a very important discussion about the effect of loading on the machine and when the load increases but obviously the current would increase and uh, the current uh, increases such that the mechanical power develop should get increased. <laughs>